I'm after picking up this uh, battery monitor from Druck and uh, this is the contents the the monitor itself with the three wires black uh, red yellow the Hall effect sensor which I just expected to put this short length of wire it came with this tiny short one as well I didn't expect that so this will be the standard length but I got the one with the extra uh, length of cable sensing cable right the manual um, it takes reading several times it's not the uh, the easiest to read but uh, there is a, a manual I was reading the the instructions about setup but uh, it said look at the diagrams but the, the the wiring diagram wasn't complete so I went back online and looked at the images to so that my black biro is the uh, the negative the positive and the yellow is the blue lines so that would be the the standard arrangement there this is where you have um, a different uh, power supply going to the to the uh, unit but I would be using this one anyway um, this is interesting here now uh, if if the is talking about charging port and discharging port if they don't share the same port you need to make the positive of the charging cable go through the hole of the transform I take that would be a situation where uh, you know uh, if you have a car or a diesel engine uh, you're, you're supplying the power out and then the alternator will start charging back the, uh, the, the same cable so this this would do here but perhaps if you have a situation where you have solar charging my understanding then is you would have to put the the charging cable from from the solar or whatever or a, a battery charger or whatever um, if it's separate you would have to put it through the Hall effect sensor I must try that out at some stage I might uh, uh, rig this up as a sort of a portable um, uh, instrument where I can go around and investigate the uh, the current draws and demands of certain things the hall sensor has a small little diamond there if you can see it to indicate the uh, direction of current flow and there's a plus on this side so that will be coming from the battery and there's a negative here going away from the battery okay so I've, uh, I've extended the wiring now um, the red and the yellow to the positive and the black to black I put uh, a bit of extension cable there to try and match the sensor cable length and I've decided to go on to SAE connector so I've gone with the SAE and uh, they're connected up there now so that's that but I see one little problem for me anyway um, this little short one I may be explain it came connected and I took it off I should have uh, take a note because now I'm trying to fat them out both sides of this little cable whichever way you go on you end up with a different uh, configuration that way there now you have right on this side and if I take the other end the red is on the other side so I should have taken note of this <laughs> before disconnecting before I put this in here I noticed it that um, it on, on the on the soccer board had an out ground and it looked like 3.3 .3 volts and if I look at this one it has out over here ground and what's that UCC so I'm guessing the out is the white uh, the other side at the ground in the center and the UCC is the positive so I'm going to connect it this way so while there was that could explain why there was a short bit of cable but there was no notice to say to take note of that you can see the problem with these SAs I have there now that if I connect that up now you can see uh, the reverse polarity positive to negative I have the little uh, 
reverse polarity adapter somewhere. I must just find it before uh, what I connect up. Right, I've set up a, a temporary test rig here now. I have a 105 ampere hour uh, deep cycle battery and this is another Drock uh, energy meter. It's the ones that are up to 20 amps and have their own built-in shunt so it's very easy just to connect to the, the battery. The uh, new meter is showing 13 volts so everything looks okay and it's showing the battery at zero so that'll all have to be set up. The setup I have is um, I have the uh, the Hall effect there um, supply coming from the battery and going on to uh, a 300 watt inverter. It's so got a, a battery charger and I've ran the positive of that also through the uh, the Hall effect just to see whether um, it will record uh, the flow in and out. And I have the plus of this facing the battery and the minus the minus facing away. Right, we see how we get on. Okay, I've been trying to follow these instructions uh, for setting the battery capacity. Um, I've done it about three or four times and it flashes twice and I set to 105 ampere hours and I saw on YouTube uh, how you get it to register is you disconnect the uh, power for a while, the screen goes blank and reconnect but it's still the same. So, right, I've got uh, a hair curler for the girls and it's drawing 140 watts AC. We'll try that. Okay, I got this to read now um, 105 ampere hours. Um, when I set the ampere hours, I had to go on to set the uh, full voltage. And when I set that, I decided to pick 12.8. It doesn't say whether it's uh, absorption voltage, uh, float voltage, but most batteries at rest are about 12.8. So I've gone for 12.8, even though she's reading a bit more than that. And when I did that, um, everything is showing now. It's showing the battery full 105 ampere hours and 12.9 oh, that's the voltage and it's because of that it's reset the, the watts and watt hours so we'll try a little exercise again now and see what happens you see that one there now note we suggest to set the voltage as the voltage when full charged what does that mean at accumulation stage, when float stage, or when at rest. When at rest, I'd regard that as full charge, but that's up to interpretation. But I'm going to go for when batteries at rest. I've just done some checks there with the uh, clip on meter, and I was getting 11.08 amps draw and 12.19 volts in the battery, which would give me. Uh, 135 watts. Now the what I call the battery monitor which is this one here um, it's showing 11.27 amps 12.02 volts giving uh, 135.46 watts plus or minus equal to what the meter is showing. Now the Hall effect sensor is showing 11.6 amps draw 12.3 volts giving 142 watts so that would be plus or minus five percent over what this clip-on uh, meter is reading so I think it is reading slightly over so that's my findings seems to be a bit over on the readings by about five percent we'll go in now to set the uh, battery voltage if the battery, I have it set already, but if it wasn't, the first time I was getting nothing here. It needs to know the, vo the battery voltage. So to get that, one quick press. Uh, that's that set. Next press, this is the, the voltage. So that's the one you want. Uh, I've set it 12.8. What it does is like... Uh, Setting the ampere hour, it flicks between them all, and when you want to change the one you want, say I wanted to change that now to 22, 23, 
I want to set it to 1. You keep flicking with this bottom button and then it'll go start all over again and uh, whatever digit is flashing you go up and down with this until you're, you're happy. Oh well, that's because you can have um, 100 and odd volts I suppose there that's zero. So I could change that now with the lower button but I'm not. And when you've got what you want, like that's 12.8, again you you hold the upper for a few seconds and when you leave it go the FU should flash twice and then you know you'll have it. Yeah, there she goes. So that's it now. And the, the battery capacity now, will sh the symbol will show and the number of ampere hours. Not the easiest, I haven't gone into um, to put the uh, high voltage and low voltage yet. Um, not the easiest, you have to play around with it. I hope that little bit helps. So what I've learned is this bottom switch here will uh, one click and it'll just clear the backlight on. Uh, if you hold it down, th this again now is when the battery's at rest and you're not charging or discharging. It will clear the uh, the amps and watts and stuff. And if you're not getting any symbols up here after you've set this 105 ampere, if it's blank, what you do is rather than just one press to get through all the various um, settings, I'll do that now. Just that's high. Uh, sorry, that's amp ampere hours. That's the uh, the battery voltage at rest. I don't know what that is. Uh, that's the high voltage alarm, and that's the low voltage alarm. Um, this would be uh, current, which I have no high current, and as I say, therefore some other functions. I think it's to do with Bluetooth. So to get out again now you just hold everything and then leave go and it should flash twice and we should be back to the screen. Right. Now if this isn't shown up here after you've set it, what I found if you hold if you press the upper one and hold for a reasonably good length of time, I haven't counted but quite a bit of time, probably ten seconds. When you leave go, everything uh, starts showing. Beyond that, that's all I know about it. Trial and error. I'm uh, charging still with the battery. So what I'm going to do now is leave it charge up to full voltage and then leave it rest overnight. And I'm going to try to test again when I know I have a full battery and it's 105 ampere hour and a little bit more knowledge how this thing works and I'm going to remove this other meter and I'm going to come straight from the battery via the, the hall sensor straight onto the inverter like normal, like it would be normally and just try again. So she's charging away and get the negative there. So that's a uh, I've run that through the Hall Effect sensor, so that's a handy enough feature um, if you wanted to uh, capture the the going out and going in of uh, what. Certainly, I suppose um, solar would be handy just to see what's uh, coming in from the solar.